It's your boy DJ Maestro. I'm DJ Chaos. And y'all watching Pure Cash TV. How did y'all come up with that name? Me personally, Maestro, I used to be, and you can see the picture, it used to be DJ Mario, so I was like, all right, well, you know, that's kind of corny. You know, just DJ Mario. So, um, you know, Maestro, Maestro, you know, we've been out here for so long and we've been, you know, politicking with so many other people, DJs, and, you know, me personally, I've had a lot of experience with, with other DJs here and kind of feel like we kind of taught them a lot of things, you know, on the on the turntable. So, Maestro in, in Spanish, teacher, plus ma Maestro, you know, is a conductor, right, of, of orchestras or, you know, so that's, that's what I came up with. Yeah, I mean, um, I started off as DJ CeeLo. It was Mario and CeeLo uh, back in the days, in, in the early 90s. Um, and then I remember having the conversation with, with Maestro um, at a park. We were like, you know, it can't be Mario and CeeLo. You know what I'm saying? First of all, it's his government. And we were just like, we need to come up with something else. And um, we tried to find names that started with the letter of our government first name. So. Um, you know, it, it just kept thinking and thinking, and you know, after he came up with Maestro, we were trying to figure out something that would, um, you know, sound, sound good, good right after Maestro. And then, you know, um, sometimes when I have a lot to drink, I think you know, <laughs> uh, the chaos side comes out. <laughs> so you know, it kind of all just made sense. So, oh. Maestro and chaos. We started. We started probably in elementary school in Chicago. We used to collect house records. Man. I want to say we started DJing in the late 80s and we started DJing house music. We were, um, we lived in Chicago, you know what I'm saying? And um, back when uh, it was hip house and freestyle music. And uh, we actually were part of a, a dance crew out there. I, I don't remember the name of it, but uh, the dude that was the head of the dance crew, his name was Willie Colon and um, he gave us a pair of old technique turntables and they weren't these turntables it was the turntables that were powered rubber band. by a rubber band <laughs> and then just you know he gave us some hand-me-down records he didn't want um, you know uh, so probably one of the first records we played was a hand-me-down record that nobody wanted to play but we played it just because we wanted to practice on this equipment you know what I'm saying what was it about DJing or what is it about DJing that inspires you to keep on doing it? For me, it's probably, you know, more of a control thing, you know, making people move, making people dance, maybe making people have a good time, you know. You have the ability to control that, you know, and how you play, what you play. You know, for me, you know, that's what it is. Man, um, I, I remember um, in Chicago, the DJs that um, we used to listen to, the Bad Boy Bills, the um, Julian Perez's, you know, you used, used to listen to them on the radio mixing house records. And the piece that always caught me was the, um, how they would blend one record into the next and um, the way that it would always be on time. They would never be off. There, nothing was ever offbeat. And you would listen to it. and. Um, you know, the, the, the skill that goes into matching beats, I think, is what first attracted me. And then, you know, as you get into it, you learn all the different things that you can do from beat juggling to scratching to, you know, and then just the challenge of putting it all together in a way that's entertaining. Um, I like the challenge of it. How long have y'all been out here in Orlando and what was it like back then? Since 91, right? Yeah, since 1991. Um, there's always been a little scene out here, yeah. you know, it's always been a little scene, you know, a lot of people don't think Orlando, you know, they don't really think hip hop or partying with Orlando, they think more of a tourist type of place, you know, but, you know, Orlando's always had a nice little vibe, you know, and we, we started doing, you know, shows and we started promoting our own events back, what, 94? 93, 94, 95, renting out little places, you know, yeah. inviting all our friends to it. When uh, we came out here in 91, that was, um, 
the era of the hitmen, right? Nasty and Khaled and Caesar were out here doing parties. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that was the first group of people I became exposed to doing things out here in Orlando. And then as you started paying attention to that, you, you know, you started learning about all the different spots that were out here. Like, they were doing Lebanese and they were doing um, Rotary Club. And then, um, you know, they had a guy designing flyers for them uh, named Neil For Real, who designed the, the Panic logo, uh, the Panic Vision logo. And um, I think he was part of a crew, a reggae crew or something that used to do the Rotary Club, if you remember. They were called the Not Naughty Heads. I don't remember what they were called, but, you know, just off of what the hitmen were doing, and once you started paying attention, there was just a lot of different people doing things out here. Um, that, that's who I remember from the, from the early 90s. Started in 93 when we graduated, when I graduated high school, and we started thinking about promoting parties out here. Um, we came up with Panic, you know what I'm saying? It um, came out of the word Hispanic, you know what I'm saying? And um, just like with most hip hop things, right, we added the K at the end of it, and um, that's where it all began. And then, um, you know, we've been doing, we promoted parties under Panic Productions, we did mixed CDs, mixed tapes under Panic Productions, and then um, early this year, cassettes. Um, Cassettes. We did cassettes <laughs> under Panic. That's crazy. And that actually, that's the straight out the box CD or mixtape. You can get it on PanicVision.com. You can download it if you want it. That's when we were rocking under Mario and CeeLo. Um, so if you want to go back that far, um, I already forgot the question. <laughs> Panic, how did that go? Oh, 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 yeah, so earlier this year, you know what I'm saying, we were, um, you know, the internet's become so big, and um, I go on certain websites that I won't name right now, but I would go to see video content, and um, I would always feel like they, the, the content they were providing didn't really reflect my taste, you know what I'm saying? I see a lot of ignorant things, a lot of fights, a lot of beef, a lot of things that you know, I, I have to skip through to get to the content that I wanted to see. And so, you know, we started talking and we were like, man, he felt this, Maestro felt the same way. So we were like, you know, what if there was a website that, um, you know, catered to, you know, what, what our personal tastes are when it comes to the culture. So we bought the, the, the name on GoDaddy and, um, you know, with the help of uh, NSX, Ray on NSX Payne, you know what I'm saying? Um, founder of 95 Live, Google him, you know what I'm saying? Um, he's been family since early 2000, and um, you know he put us on to, you know how to how to um, create the site and maintain it ourselves. So we basically started just you know, we do the site ourselves. All the content is content that we select. Um, every piece of it we designed, you know, and. Um, we started doing that, and then what happened is it just evolved from there. And, um, you know, I ran into um, a, a, a cat by the name of Johnny Storm, you know what I'm saying? He represents One Shot. Um, Google him, find him on YouTube. He, um, he battles on the grind time circuit. You know, shout out to Matt Hills and Direct and, and Cap Callis. And uh, basically, you know, he's nasty. And um, I, I met him. Um, through other avenues and we just started building. You know, I gave him copies of our old CDs and he approached us one day and said, hey, do you want to put, you know, your hands on my mixtape? You know what I'm saying? Put your touch on it. And we were like, yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? We like this music. So um, he gave us the tracks and we worked on it. Uh, we finished it and then what happened was he tried to put it out on uh, thatpiff.com. But um, three of the songs they wouldn't put they wouldn't put out. I don't know for what reason, if it was copyright, you know, copyrighted material or for whatever reason, you know, he couldn't get the entire mixtape the way that he wanted it on that piff. And he was like, man, do you know other sites? I wish I could just put it on Panic Vision. And uh, that statement right there said, yeah, why can't you? And Maestro had been talking about having a mixtapes page anyways. So we were just like, yeah, let's figure it out. And, you know, NSX again, you know, came through and he helped us figure out how to put a player on the site and embed it into the into the page. And you know, since then we I mean we've uploaded all our old mixtapes. You can go on there. Yep. 
There's a mixtape tab on our website and you can go and download all our mixtapes, you know, through there. Yeah, we started putting Orlando artists mixtapes that, you know, um, whose music we like, we put it on the website. And then um, we had been doing the Ustream show separate, right? And it just got to the point where we were like, well, why isn't that part of the website? And then that became another page on the site instead of you know, taking people to Ustream, we take them to Panic Vision when they want to tune into the Panic Attack, which is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10 p.m. Um, you know, panicvision.com slash panic attack. And so, um, what we ended up doing was with the mixtapes page and Johnny's new mixtape, um, we basically started, um, we, we planned one big show to play his mixtape from beginning to end, interview him, let him freestyle. And I mean, that was a pretty big show. We were partnering with the Cut Cafe and Eddie B. Swift, um, you know, who has a show on Ustream. And we basically just um, broadcast that show. And then it, instead of just us mixing, and it's become us supporting, you know, everybody that's out here doing their thing. And, um, you know, like you see, now Smiles has come through. We've interviewed directors out from LA, a cat by the name of Max Albert. Now we do, you know, more than just mix show, you can chat with us or you can come here and listen to us talk to people that are doing things in the industry um, down to the Orlando artists that we, we think should have some shine you know what I'm saying that we support all right and so here it is anyways